In this lesson, we'll discuss two very important ideas in mathematics known as inductive and deductive reasoning. Let's begin with their definitions. Inductive reasoning is the process of drawing a general conclusion by observing a pattern in specific instances. This conclusion is called a hypothesis or conjecture. In deductive reasoning, we use accepted facts and general principles to arrive at a specific conclusion. With that being said, in question number one, which deals with inductive reasoning, consider the numbers shown on your screen. Verify that the numbers 72,963 and 7,538,463 are evenly divisible by nine, but the others are not. Add the digits of each number. Do you see a pattern? Make a conjecture. The nice thing about this question is that they give us a hint as to how to come up with our conjecture which is to add the digits of each number. Now let's assume that we don't know any of these numbers are divisible by nine. Instead, what we can do is add up the digits that make up each number. For example, seven plus two makes nine, and dividing this by nine gives us an output of one. Given that this output is an integer, we can make the assumption that 72 is also divisible by nine, which it is, it gives us eight. Let's try the same thing for 963. If I add up 9 plus 6 plus 3, I get 18. 18 is divisible by 9. The output is 2. And it turns out that if I take this number and divide it by 9 using a calculator, I get an integer output, which means that it is divisible by 9. We're 2 for 2 so far. Let's see if the pattern holds true for the last one. Adding up 7 plus 5 plus 3, 8, 4, 6, and 3, we get an output of 36. Taking that sum of 36 and dividing it by nine gives us four. It also turns out that if we take this whole number and divide it by nine, we get an integer output, which means that it too is divisible by nine. So the conjecture we can make here is that if the sum of the numbers that make up a number are divisible by nine, then the whole number is also divisible by nine. And just for curiosity's sake, adding four plus nine plus one makes 14. 14 doesn't divide equally into 9, and neither does the whole number. So to summarize, in order for 9 to divide evenly into a number, 9 must divide the sum of the digits of the number as well. Let's move on to the next example. Four students, Alex, Carmela, Noah, and Winnie, participate in different college activities, debate team, basketball, orchestra, or theater. Use the following clues to determine the activity of each student. So we have four activities here and four students. Let's create a table. We have debate team, basketball, orchestra, and theater. The four students will be listed above and they will represent each column. We, are, we have Alex, Carmela, Noah, and Winnie. We need to know what these students do for fun at school. Using clue number one, it reads, Winnie lives in the same apartment complex as the musician and theater participant. So this column represents Winnie. We know right away that Winnie is not the musician and she is not the theater participant. So I'll put an X to represent theater that she's not in theater and an X that she does not belong to the orchestra team. In the second clue, the musician and Noah were friends in high school. So this represents Noah. He's not the musician because if he was, we would have been told that he is the musician. Instead, he's not the musician, so I will write down X for Noah. He definitely cannot be the musician. In clue number three, Carmela has a heavier course load than the basketball player. This means she's not the basketball player and fewer credits than the theater participant, so she's not in theater either. Finally, Noah, who has the fewest credits, is not on the debate team. So we can actually cross out debate team for Noah, and to interpret this part, who has the fewest credits, we have to go back to clue three. In clue three, Carmela has a heavier course load than the basketball player, but fewer credits than the theater participant. If she's definitely not in basketball and theater, then this means Noah, given that he has the fewest credits, is not in theater either. 
As a result, we've deduced that Noah is the basketball player. And this also means that neither Alex or Winnie are basketball players. So Winnie has to be in the debate club. And if Winnie is in the debate club, Carmela is definitely not in the debate club. She has to be in the orchestra. And this leaves us by deductive reasoning that Alex is in theater and not in the other activities. So there you have it. Two examples on how to use inductive and deductive reasoning to solve problems.